Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude, and I'm here to help you finish your Christmas shopping list and let everyone else over there stiff arm their competition while trying to fight off that trip to fan on Turkey Night. Now, what we did was we partnered with Rochester Sports Autographs, the largest JSA authenticated autograph distributor in the United States, where you can get up to 75% off over 30,000 autographed sports collectibles during this holiday season. They have something for everyone. But how is RSA able to offer such great deals on JSA authentication, you ask? Well, they do this by making deals directly with athletes so there are no extra markups, and they choose to then pass that savings on to you, the customer. Now, all orders from Rochester Sports Autographs are top quality and shipped to your door with top authentication and a money-back guarantee. But hurry up because customers are so stark raving mad for RSA that memorabilia sells out daily. All you have to do is head over to shoprsa.com forward slash SHN. Again, that's shoprsa.com forward slash SHN. So don't wait to bring home your favorites and own a piece of sports history for you and the loved ones on your shopping list this holiday season. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. The Rose Bowl. The game that inspired the college football bowl season has a long and storied history. The stadium itself is 100 years old, and in celebration of it, Pigskin Dispatch is assembling some of the top historians and authors to share the memories, people, and events that make the granddaddy of them all the special game that it is. Enjoy this Rose Bowl memory from pigskindispatch.com. Hello, my football friends. This is Darren Hayes of pigskindispatch.com. Welcome once again to the Pig Pen, your portal of positive football history. And once again, we have some football archaeology with Timothy P. Brown, author and a historian that has a, a great website of footballarchaeology.com. Uh, Tim Brown, welcome back to the Pig Pen. Hey, Darren. Thank you for having me on again. Looking forward to chatting as always. Yeah, th- this is a, a really interesting uh, topic that we're going to talk about, the, the 1915 brown bruins and uh have a very interesting story that you shared back on september 2nd and uh really enjoying this one and i think the listeners will as well yeah well, actually you know before chatting about uh that team um i think it was yesterday or the day before um a an rppc so a real photo postcard of that 1915 of brown's 1915 team sold on ebay for a thousand twenty five dollars. Wow. So I mean that's the you know, it's not like I've tracked tracked it, you know, over over life, but I, that's I think the highest priced uh, postcard I've ever I've ever seen. Um, but you know, it has Fritz Pollard is is you know is on the team. So uh, a lot of times it uh, especially older uh, African American you know football stuff, you know, can command a pretty good uh, pretty good price um you know it's an item that i don't think i've ever seen that one before until it was offered in that particular auction uh, and then you know even like if, if for nfl people you know rich pollard was the first african-american coach in the nfl you know back in i think 21 or you know something along those lines so you know but just a couple of couple of interests kind of collide and all of a sudden you're paying some pretty big money <laughs> you know, right for yeah, a postcard he, he, I mean, he was a tremendous player as well. I mean, every I think every team that he went to, he he really brought their game up quite a bit uh, to a different level. So that's uh, another reason to want to collect that to have a, a legendary yeah. player. So yeah, right. well, you know, so the, the thing about that, you know, the nineteen fifteen team, you know, is uh, you know Brown. I think you know by and large has been kind of a second tier program, you know, and it was at the time. I mean, and I'm comparing that to. Harvard, Yale, Princeton, Penn, and then, you know, probably like West Point. Those were probably the premier, you know, year after year premier programs. Um, but they had a long-term, you know, long-term coach at Brown, you know, during some of that period. 
and you know they they have some pretty pretty competitive teams and so they actually i think they ended up they were uh they they were they surprisingly beat yale that year which they seldom did but that was the yale team the 1915 yale team um Frank Hinkey had come back to coach the team in 14 and they kind of struggled. And then they were really struggling in 15. And that was the year that uh, the, the captain, Alex Wilson fired the head coach. So he fired Hinkey and he brought in Tom Shevlin to come in and you know, kind of fix things up uh, for the last couple of games of the year. But, you know, part of his being fired was Hinkey's being fired was that they lost to Brown. <laughs> so, you know, it was, um, I think that's, the, that's the last instance I'm aware of where, you know, that was the last year Yale still had that the captain runs the show, you know, kind of philosophy, but you know, he literally fired the coach because his, his word was final. Uh, and then they, you know, they, they switched things up at, you know, the following year. Um, so that was, you know, kind of an interesting element of it. And, and even, you know, to kind of the perspective of, um, Percy Houghton, who was the coach at Harvard, uh, didn't even go, or he wasn't there for the, for the Harvard Brown game uh, because you know he thought it more important to go uh, scout Yale, you know. And coaches used to do that sometimes. Stag did that a few times, and you know you read about it, you know here and there people did that. Uh, so I mean, it just kind of tells you that that it was a real upset. <laughs> you know, right. The head coach didn't even show up for the game. But that sound, I mean, it sounds so strange, but I think you explained it the last time we had you on, we talked about the, the first coach and when the word uh, coach was used just uh, recently aired and uh, uh, as a podcast and uh, you know, you explained to that, that the, the coaches really were important, not really as important at game time as the captains were like they are today, yeah. you know? Yeah. So it's, uh, so yeah. It's, the captains called the plays. There was no coaching from the sideline, all of that, you know? So, well, so practice, was practice now, you, week was... You, the practice week was done so he could go scout the teams and the captain takes over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that, to some extent that, you know, that's, that is the case. Um, but then, you know, so the other thing that's just kind of interesting about that team and, and football in general at the time was um, Harvard, Yale and Princeton had policies that they didn't go to bowl games. Right. And, and, you know, this is still, you know, they are, they didn't have postseason games. And so this is, you know, the Rose bowl had, had had a game back in Oh two, and then that was kind of forgotten. And then they were restarting it for 1916. So they're inviting, you know, the best team they could get from the East that, that played in the 1915 season, but you know, so Harvard, Yale, Princeton wouldn't go. Um, and so, you know, Brown ended up being, um, you know, the best team <laughs> that they could find you know, who would say yes, um, you know, and so then they did whatever the five day, you know, train trip out to, out to, out to Pasadena. Um, but, you know, there were, the, you know, the big 10 uh, didn't allow teams to, to play in, in postseason games. They, they did allow Ohio state I, to play in the Rose Bowl, I think in like 22, I think it was, Um you know, and so just in general, and then even teams that did where the school or the faculty allowed it, you know, sometimes the, the kids just said, yeah, we're done. You know, they're just, they were just done with the season and, you know, they'd already turned in their equipment, whatever. They didn't want to spend time away from family for the holidays, you know, those kinds of things. So, I mean, it's just, that it was just a, a different world. You know, we now so many teams play in bowls, you know, to begin with, but um, it's just kind of the expectation of, you know, well, of course you're going to go to the bowl. But back then, you know, a lot of times, you know, teams had the opportunity to go, turned them down. But so Brown ended up, you know, playing in the game and then they lost to Washington State. So, you know, that was kind of a, for the folks out West, that was a big deal is, you know, kind of a credibility boost that, that one of their teams could play and beat, uh, you know, a team that's now, you know, of the Ivy you know, caliber. So, you know, it's, it's a big, you know, kind of a big deal, you know, for those folks. Yeah. So, okay. So we already said that uh, Fritz Pollard was on that team. Was there anybody else uh, significant on that team besides Pollard? 
Yeah, one of their uh, um, uh, Wade. Now I'm blanking on his name. Um, Wade, 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 Wade. He was a uh, guard or, or tackle. Um, Wallace Wade, sorry. And oh. so he was. Uh, he coached Alabama. Uh, took them, you know, to a couple of Rose Bowls. And then he uh, he was the coach at Duke uh, for quite a while, and and uh, they played when uh, when Oregon State played the Rose Bowl at Duke because of the bombing of Pearl Harbor. You know, so the forty two Rose Bowl, uh, Wade was you know, still the coach there. So, uh, but he you know so he is he and Pollard are probably the most uh, most famous of the of the Brown players that year. Oh, very interesting. And, uh, you know, some great, great research. And uh, we appreciate you sharing these uh, teams and some of these innovations from football from so long ago at your football archaeology site. Uh, why don't you share with people how they can, you can find your, your tidbits that you share with us each and every day and uh, how they can subscribe to your website to make sure they know when that you've released them. Sure. So, um, you know, my website is just, you know, footballarchaeology.com. Um, you can also find me on Twitter under the same name. And, you know, the gist of it is uh, I publish these, I publish a tidbit every day, uh, comes out at seven o'clock Eastern time. And so if, if you subscribe, you'll get that uh, as an emailed newsletter. Um, and then obviously if you're, you know, you can also just visit the site anytime you want. And, you know, there's a full archives in there with, you know, now getting on, you know, 300, you know, some article, you know, full length, long form articles or tidbits, which tend to be more, you know, 30 second to a minute long reads. Okay. So just little snippets. And uh, I can tell you that it is exactly right at 7 p.m. It's very consistent because uh, usually my, my family and I were watching a rerun of the Big Bang Theory and it, the chime for my email you know, signal, my notification comes <laughs> right at the same time of the, the theme song for Big Bang Theory every time. So it's like part of the song to us now. <laughs> well, it's... <laughs> just gets scheduled in the application yeah. <laughs> oh, you, could have, you, could, you could have just take more punctuality credit for than, than that don't, well you know so I, I still have to manually do it on twitter so <laughs> you know but then then it's going to be at 703 705 somewhere in that range. yeah yeah we're, we're well into the show by then so <laughs> yeah so. <laughs> all right tim well thank you very much and uh we'll talk to you again next week with some more great football archaeology cool we'll see you next week thanks darren Peeking up at the clock, the time's running down. We're going to go into victory formation, take a knee, and let this baby run out. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you back tomorrow for the next podcast. We invite you to check out our website, pigskindispatch.com, not only to see the daily football history, but to experience positive football with our many articles on the good people of the game, as well as our own football comic strip, Cleet Marks Comics. Pigskindispatch.com is also on social media outlets, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and don't forget the Pigskin Dispatch YouTube channel to get all of your positive football news and history. Special thanks to the talents of Mike and Gene Monroe, as well as Jason Neff for letting us use their music during our podcast. This podcast is part of the Sports History Network, your headquarters for the yesteryear of your favorite sport. You can learn more at sportshistorynetwork.com. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And I hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the Sports History Network and were able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network back in 2020 with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history. But as far as I'm concerned, we're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment. You know that. Can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports yesteryear, starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, or who knows, maybe even writing an article for us over on the website. Seriously, all you got to do 
is reach out to us on the contact page over at sportshistorynetwork.com. You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter, because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you gotta do, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me, and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.